In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come together, all who find joy in the Lord. The Lord is our shepherd in good times and in hard times. And the Lord is with us in all that we experience in life. And whether we are at home or far, the Lord knows our every need. Then let us raise our voices in praise and adoration. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us remain standing. Our first hymn this morning is number 338, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. to worship today. We are glad that you here, are here today. Um, just sort of a, a point of order. Um, my wife tested positive for COVID yesterday, and so 
I will not be greeting after church. Um, if anyone needs anything, I will be in my office, or you're welcome to call later, but I'm just being uh, very cautious. But she is doing well, but uh, just trying to be careful, so please forgive my unfriendly nature today. <laughs> And um, our newsletters have been printed and distributed, so please don't hesitate to pick one up. Um, also, it's come to my attention today that it is Roger Beard's 80th birthday. So, happy birthday, Roger. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Um, at this time, just um, um, let's see. I, anything I know, uh, personnel's following uh, worship today in the library. Um, anything else? Um, oh yes, Candice. Um, there's a basketball game Monday night at 6:30 at the Red. All the cheerleaders are welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Turning our attention to our prayer list. Uh, one update this week, uh, Joel Campbell has been in the hospital this week and he is uh, pretty serious. Um, there, um, He's hoping to get back home but his, um, his condition is pretty serious so please keep Joel and his family um, in your prayers. Um, is there anyone else to lift up in prayer this morning? Oh, okay. Uh, buddy. Almighty God, as we stand in your house this morning, we are surrounded by people that we love and we care about, and we are thankful for that. We're thankful for the sweet spirit that we feel in this place, and we thank you for that, because you are responsible for that. Not that we're perfect people, O oh God. In fact, we greatly need a Savior. We greatly need your Son. Because we come before you as imperfect people. People who have, in some ways, tried to be good, but in other ways have fallen short of your glory. And we ask for your love and your forgiveness this day and your guidance to keep us on the right paths. We, as we've lifted up to you these many people who are on our prayer list, you know the needs of each of them, O oh God. You who have created us in your image. And we lift each of you, each of them up to you, O oh God, for you know the needs of all people. You know what each of them need. We pray for those who have experienced loss. We pray for those who need healing and those who need comfort. And we are thankful, O oh God, as we worship here today, that your Spirit is upon us, that your Spirit is alive and well in this church. 
for you are a source of strength and blessings. Help us to continue to be focused on living our lives as we should. Help us to remember to put our own thoughts second and your plans and purposes for us first. We thank you so much for the sense of community we have in this church. and We ask that you would help us to enable us to reach others so that more people might come to know Jesus Christ. Help us this day to focus on your word, to focus on serving you and one another. We thank you for the fact that Jesus walked among us and we now pray as Christ Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And we lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, This time we'd like for the children to come forward for the children's sermon. Good morning. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the Beatitudes because in today's scripture, the uh, pastor's going to read about the Beatitudes. Well, what's a Beatitude? Well, and it's a, a Beatitude is, it means that you are truly blessed with happiness. And God gave, or Jesus gave us nine Beatitudes. But today, we're only going to talk about two of these. <laughs> Our first one is a big word. It's called merciful. And it means to be kind or generous. So sometimes I'm up here and I'm struggling, trying to hold something up, and Annabelle will come over here and she'll hold my microphone for me. That's showing other kindness. And um, at Christmas time, Lola May and Keeper made me uh, ornaments, and that was showing their love and their kindness for others. So then my second one is called Peacemaker. What is a peacemaker? A peacemaker is somebody that tries to uh, bring peace to an argument. Okay, so say Cameron. Cameron, what's your favorite Pokemon character? Oh, Keever. Do you have a favorite Pokemon character? I think that's the one I was going to use. Um, okay, you did Pikachu. Wills, do you have one? Loma, do you have one? Evie? Okay, so say the. Um, Keeper says that Pikachu's his favorite. And Lola says, no, Evie's better than Pikachu. And then they get into this argument like brothers and sisters do. And then Cameron comes over and he says, I think they're both great. He is called the peacemaker. Because he's not choosing one side or the other. He is given uh, peace between both of you. And he enjoys both of them. Well, in the kingdom of God, God is always merciful, and God is always showing peace. And we are supposed to show peace toward others. Because on the Beatitudes, if we're blessed, that means we're happy. And we want to be happy, right? So today I've got you, uh, Heather, our former uh, secretary, gave me these little bees. And so on the back of them, you get a cute little sucker. See you come on. after church we should test the congregation on their Pokemon knowledge. So. <laughs> Brothers and sisters who are God's people, 
Let us join together and confess our sins before Almighty God in one another. Lord, so often we have tried in our own wisdom to live a life, and we have failed to seek your word and your wisdom. Too often in our own efforts, we have chosen our ways when you have led us through the pastures by civil lives. Forgive us, Lord, and touch our hearts that we might be more willing to accept your guidance. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ promised in the gospel to all who repent and believe. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from their ways and live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> The sixth chapter, the first through the eighth verses. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. 
He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted, and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgah, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Sanctify us through your words. Your words are truth, O Lord. Join with me now as we confess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified there and buried. He descended in the tomb. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended in heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. As our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us, let us return a portion of those blessings to Almighty God.
God, we come before you as humble people, people whose gifts are sometimes not worthy. Yet we bring them to you this morning and ask that you will bless them, that you will multiply them so that good may happen upon this earth. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And from St. Matthew's Gospel, the fifth chapter, the first through the twelfth verses. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
always try with the sermon that there should be something that you learn and take from it each week. Well, today's scriptures are both great scriptures on how we should live our lives. You know, one of the things that um, I think is so useful about the Bible is how it can guide us. It doesn't tell us every specifically thing to do. While it is a guidebook for life, it is not a GPS. You know, one of the things that sometimes aggravates me is whenever the GPS is just a little bit off, where it tries to make me take a turn too soon or tells you right after you passed something. Where the Bible, as a guidebook for life, requires us to use our thinking skills for guidance because it doesn't tell us what we should do specifically. Yet it gives us a powerful overview of how we should, in fact, live our lives. The Beatitudes are wonderful examples of this. And I think often overlooked, we tend to focus on the Ten Commandments while forgetting these Beatitudes, where Jesus himself gives us these series of blessed things. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is an important thing to do. Yet, this little text from Micah, you might have heard it before, and I think often we focus on the very last part without reading the whole of the scripture. But in it, the Lord is actually bringing a case or a judgment against Israel because Israel has not followed his plans and purposes. And God is bringing these concerns to the people. He reminds them that in the time of old that he gave them prophets. Moses, Aaron, Aaron, Miriam. And yet they chose to stray. Yet what I find so wonderful about God is that God does not give up on his people that is a very wonderful thing to do. Because at times, it's easy to give up. In fact, giving up is the easiest thing to do. In fact, I fear sometimes that we often do not try because we are fearful of failure. But this scripture then gets summed up in the final verse. Because God says, O mortal, he has shown you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? There is a question mark there. And maybe we should ask that of ourselves today. What does the Lord require of each of us? And then Micah in this text answers this. To act justly, to love mercy, mercy and to walk humbly with your God. If we could just apply these things a little more seriously at times, we would have the whole Bible down pat. If you think about it, this sums up so much of the Scripture very succinctly. To act justly. That is to treat people as they should. You should. To be just is to do what is right in each of these situations. To love mercy is to show that to others. Don't we want mercy to be shown to us? But then, isn't it much harder whenever we have been wronged, when someone has done something to us, and in the Beatitudes it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of my sake. But then how hard is it to show mercy in return? 
Because I can show mercy with ease to the people that first show it to me. It's just like love. It is so easy to love someone that loves you back. But it's much more difficult to show love when it is not reciprocated. And finally, it says to walk humbly with your God. That is to walk humbly hand in hand and acknowledge that God is who we say He is. That God is in control and that we need a God. One of my fears sometimes is that we place ourselves ahead of God. We start to think that our own sense of right and wrong trumps even God. And if we fall into that path of self-righteousness, it's hard to listen to the direction that comes from the hands of the Almighty And we need to be more willing to ask where God is leading us and how we can serve God. Because it's important to be a part of something that is greater than ourselves. And right now the world teaches us to be our own individual. I'm not actually as old It's what sometimes people think I am. I like to tell people I'm not as old as I look or act or feel. But in order, I thought about it this morning with um, Laura's example of Pokemon. I first learned to play Pokemon on the Game Boy. And I expect half of you's not sure what that is and the other half are, you're either half the congregation is either too old or too young to know what a Game Boy is. But I remember that because it was something I could take with me everywhere. And I didn't have to share. It was mine and mine alone, something that I could play. And now so many things are like that. We all have phones that we don't have to share. We don't have to wait for siblings or parents or brothers and sisters to get off the phone to use them. And there are these portable entertainment systems for many of us. And we have come so individual minded that we forget that at times we are part of things that are greater than ourselves. See, each of us have family units that we are a part of. Being a part of the church is about being something greater than ourselves. People who work are a part of that organization. People who serve in the military are serving something that is greater than themselves. And that attitude has changed over time. But maybe we need to go just a little deeper and continue to ask, what does the Lord require of us? Yesterday, I had an interesting day. I did a a funeral yesterday for a man by the name of Boyd Lee Hedrick. And what was interesting is he fought in World War II. He served in the Navy. He saw action at Iwo Jima and Okinawa. And as I was preparing for the service, I realized that over the course of 20 years or so of ministry, I have done a lot of services for people who have fought in the military, in specific World War II. Yet, most likely, yesterday was the last time that I will ever perform a funeral rite for someone who served the country in World War II. For me, it was an end of an era in which we see that the greatest generation is passing at an alarming rate. A generation that banded together to make sure they were standing for the values and the beliefs 
that were important to them. Of course, a lot has changed, and time marches on, if you will. And if we, as God's people, believe that church is important, that worship of God is important, that being here and serving others as well as God is important, we must make sure that that is what is in fact what we are doing. What is very interesting of the story of this uh, gentleman was he went into the Navy when he was 17. His parents had to sign for him to do this. And in my perspective as a parent, One thinks, what were they in fact thinking? Yet his dedication and his interest was so there that they were willing to do that very thing. And he came home from it in one piece. And I ask today, are we acting justly? Are we loving mercy? And are we walking humbly with our God? Because this is an easy scripture to remember. It's an easy scripture to quote. But if you think about it, it's a little bit of a hard scripture to truly live. Now we can pay lip service to it and that is an easy thing to do. But to really act justly requires something of us because it means that we should act just in our jobs and at school and with our families and all of the above. And do we truly love mercy? And finally, can we walk humbly with our God? And I would argue that alone, if we're trying to do these three things by ourselves, on our own, that we are going to utterly fail, that we're going to fail miserably. And I think that that is, of course, why we need Christ and why we need Jesus in our lives, because if Jesus is truly with us, If the Holy Spirit is filling our hearts and minds, we will be better able to do these things because it's hard to do on our own. It's hard to be like this all the time. You know, one of the things that I feel like most everyone is like me is I find it hardest to be nice when I'm really tired. Like whenever I've had a lot going on or I haven't slept good or something of that nature, that's when I find it the hardest to be nice. And I think that we all have moments like that where we have to struggle to just be and act the way that we should. That is why we need to be dependent upon God and not upon ourselves. Because if we go at it alone, we will not be able to accomplish these things. And Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit and those who mourn and the meek and those who hunger and thirst For righteousness, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers in a world in which there are very few of those. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. And finally, blessed are you when people insult persecute, falsely say all kinds of evil things against you. 
And most of us who are adults, I would wager that at some point in time, someone has said some falsely evil thing against us. But my challenge is this. Let us do our best to take these scriptures serious. Let us do our best to offer more than lip service to them. Let us do our best to allow them to permeate the different facets of our lives. That we can make a difference. That we can demonstrate these scriptures to others. That we can welcome others to God's kingdom. But the only way that we will accomplish this is if we are right with Christ. I consider myself to be a very positive um, person, and I am most of the time. But you know, one of the things that um, I include myself in this is that uh, a lot of people say, well, everybody's good or something. Well, I actually um, strongly believe, and I think there's scripture to back this up, that none of us are in fact good. That really... Our natural inclination is towards selfishness and evil. It is only through that grace that comes from God that makes the difference. Now, I don't go around. I've often thought I could probably uh, really scare some folks if I would, uh, you know, start uh, pulling some sermons from Jonathan Edwards or something and you know, telling people that you're all sinners in the hands of an angry God. And I like to keep things positive and focus on the good because, in fact, there's a lot of good news that's in this Word of God, but the best news is the fact with Christ in our lives we can accomplish what God has in store for us. You know, we can make excuses all day. We can say there's not enough people at this church. We can say that we don't have enough time. We can make excuses all day long to keep from serving God. Or we can embrace the fact that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us, that the anointing that comes from the hands of Almighty God is with us. One of the most powerful experiences of my entire life was on my ordination Sunday, and I was stood in front of the altar in my home church, Mount Tabor, in which the clergy laid on their hands, symbolizing the coming of the Holy Spirit in my life and in my ministry. And God is with us because we are His people. So before the week ends, remember to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for these words of Scripture, the comfort they bring to us, and the fact that they, they challenge us. Help us to continue to focus on you, and help us to not be fearful but be willing to serve you always. In your name we pray. Amen. Now let us stand for our final hymn, number 668. I'll go where you want me to go.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Almighty God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.